Hi everyone, I'm Ashmita. I'm network engineer at Meta. I work on comms performance optimizations for our GPU-based clusters. Together with Min, we're going to talk about some of the optimizations we did in our comms and transport stack to enable high-performance Llama 4 training. So with every generation of Llama, we have seen a significant growth in the model size and the complexity. Last year, we launched Llama 3, which was a text-only model it had 405 billion parameters and was trained on 16K GPUs. However, with Llama 4, we wanted to scale this even further. The largest Llama 4 model that we have trained so far has nearly 2 trillion total parameters. In order to train such a colossal model, we had to expand our AI clusters, deploying over 100K GPUs. Secondly, the number of parallelisms have also gone up. In Llama 3, we had four degrees of parallelisms, in Llama 4, we introduced a new layer of parallelism called expert parallelism to support our mixture of expert models. Further, the individual parallelism factors have also increased in scale by 2 to 4x. With bigger models and changing parallelisms, there's more traffic going out on the network. So our challenge now is how do we scale our network and optimize our communication stack to train our models efficiently? So let's talk about the topology that solves these changing model requirements. Last year at Network at Scale, we talked about our 24K clusters. If you recall, the basic building block of an AI cluster is an AI zone. In order to form a 24K cluster, we took eight such zones and connected them together using an additional layer of switching called the aggregate training switches. At this layer of network switching, the oversubscription ratio is 1 is to 7. However, since the job size increased beyond 24K GPUs for Llama 4, we had to do two things. One, we had to build a network that spanned multiple buildings in order to support a cluster with over hundreds of thousands of GPUs. The network within the DC is still a three-layer claw architecture. Each DC has eight AI zones. To interconnect the buildings, we use a fully connected mesh between the ATSW layers of every building. Compared to a 24K cluster, we reduced our cross-zone oversubscription ratio from 1 is to 7 to 1 is to 2.7. The same oversub ratio is maintained beyond buildings as well. This is because Llama 4 generates multiple parallel collectives, thus producing much higher outstanding traffic on our network. So by reducing our oversub ratio, we ensure that our network is not a bottleneck for the next compute operation. So what are the trade-offs of these multi-layered network architecture? On one hand, this kind of topology design helps us run jobs at over 100K scale. But on the other hand, it introduces high latency. Specifically, GPUs within the same rack have the lowest latency, whereas GPUs in a different rack in the same AI zone or in a different zone or in a different building have nearly 7x to 15x to 30x high latency. This increased latency brings us two challenges. First, we need to ensure that different parallelisms with different bandwidth and latency requirements map to different layers in our network. Not doing this can affect certain parallelisms and slow down our mo model progress. Secondly, high latency can negatively impact our collective performance with existing baseline NVIDIA nickel implementation. This is because our existing collective comms library not only supports, only supports limited amount of outstanding data to be in flight, which is not enough to saturate our high bandwidth delay product of inter-building DC connections. So to address the first challenge, we introduced a new scheduler feature called the balance hierarchical allocation. This provides us with a unique ability to assign specific parallelisms to specific layers in our network. For example, this feature can ensure that a tensor parallel factor of 16, all 16 GPUs involved in TP are communicating within the same rack. This feature is now in production and is actively supported in Llama 4 scale. So in the previous slides, we addressed the first challenge with large network and higher job scales. Over the next few slides, we'll specifically address the second challenge with poor comms library performance with baseline nickel, which is made worse with higher network latency. We talk about how we evolved our comms library 
with the new algorithms and the transport stack to solve these problems. Over to Min. Thank you, Ashmita. Now let's look at the software stack of our pre-training. We made a downstream fork from the NVIDIA Nico library to host all of our custom features made by Meta engineers. Particularly, we developed the custom transport module called Sichuan within our downstream fork Nico X library. Sichuan provides the full path from custom collective algorithms all the way to the lower transport layer for network RDMA and internal NVLink. NVIDIA Nico designs the collective algorithm based on a two-stage copy scheme. The two-stage copy artifact requires data copy from compute buffer to Nico internal buffer, which would cost GPU resources, including SCMs and also HBM node store bandwidth. It does not only result in poor performance, either in concurrent computation and communication. Due to the resource contention, it also limits the network performance training due to the involved data chunking for two-stage copy. For example, a too big buffer would benefit network speed. However, it would suffer from more exposed copy. On the other hand, a small buffer would help us hide this extra copy, but would limit the network transfer speed, especially harder to saturate high latency network, such as shared by Ashmita previously. As a core renovation, we first re-architecture this framework to be zero-copy based. In the zero-copy scheme, now the source NIC can directly carry data from source user compute buffer, perform RDMA, transfer it directly to the user destination compute buffer. So now in our zero-copy scheme, the source NIC can now directly read the data from the source compute buffer and perform RDMA to deliver the data to the user destination computer buffer. It essentially eliminates an extra SM nor HBM node store that were required by the two-stage copy. Thus, both concurrent computation and communication now can be driven by different hardware without any contention. As a prerequisite for zero copy, we enable the transparent user buffer registration from PyTouch cache allocator all the way to the Sichuan in NicoX to enable RDMA access to the user buffers. Cache allocator, sometimes, it would not give us very good buffer reuse due to specific model behavior. In such a case, if we just let the registration go, it will give us a lot of registration overhead and slow down training. As a solution, we provide a memory pool-like approach to control the buffers being used by communication so that we can enable zero copy in our training without introducing any visible registration overhead. For the transport side, zero copy also exposes the entire message to transport, so we can be more flexibly control how we would handle the load balancing, such as package splitting based on the network topology and the latencies with each different destination buff peers. Although in general, we see much better performance with zero copy at network. Sometimes we see congestion on the receiver side. If there are concurrent collectives being triggered to network with too large message. To address such issue, we need a core design with the network performance tuning layer with zero copy in mind. We will detail it in the later of this talk. In addition to the zero copy, Changes, we further redesigned the algorithm framework in Sichuan. NVIDIA Nico designed the algorithms being driven by CUDA kernels and offload each individual RDMA from a given collective to an internal CPU host proxy thread. Although it fits well for the reduction collectives, such as Oridus, it forces very frequent GPU to CPU synchronization in a collective even for some non-reduction collective, such as auto all no matter their copy is available or not. To avoid such bike and force synchronization as a solution, we designed a host-driven algorithm framework in Sichuan. As shown in the diagram on the right side, for zero-copy algorithm, we no longer need any CUDA kernel involvement 
in a collective, it also, as a side benefit, enables algorithm adoption from traditional high-performance computing communication libraries, where the collective algorithms are often driven by CPU. So now, based on the core zero copy and host driven algorithm mechanisms, we could largely enhance our communication system to address various performance and feature requirements from Lama 4. For example, we largely enriched our algorithm selections to support the medium message sizes at the larger system scale. One example is the all-gather used in our fully sharded data party domain across AI zones. Another example at 100K pre-training, we would enable elastic training to keep high training good put because of the high hardware fault ratio at such scale. As of our Lama 4 strategy, we enabled it at the data parallel domain where all reduce is performed to synchronize across replicas. As COM site support, we enabled the fault tolerance support for all reduce. With, for example, we enabled a flexible timeout error handling, and the retry mechanisms in our Citron stack. Next, the zero copy and SM free features are more highlighted in the inner domains where communication are heavily exposed. For instance, we enabled it for pipeline parties and send receive, where the media message size flies across AI zones. So that with zero copy, we can overlap the send receive with concurrent computation while keeping both in a full speed. The SM3 one-sided put is another feature we enabled for the innermost tensor parallel domain. It enables very, very fine-grained computer communication overlap with Quant's model core design, so that the previously exposed communication in tensor parallel now can be pipelined and hidden. So we will omit more details of each individual features in this talk, please check details from our blog. Till here, I think we have gone over all the changes we have made for our software stack algorithm layer. Next, I will hand over to my partner Ashmita to introduce the improvements we made at the transport layer. So now that we've covered the algorithmic innovations, let's look at the custom transport stack that we built for Nicolix. Earlier, Min highlighted some of the challenges with zero copy specifically with how sending too much data into the network can result in congestion at the receiver end. To address this, we developed dynamic QPay load balancing mechanism to give us better flow control and load balancing. DQPLP provides per QP and per GPU to GPU control over the outstanding data limit. By tuning these parameters on a per network hop basis, we can limit the chance of in-cast or congestion happening on the network but also limit the buffer buildup on the network parts. Second aspect of DQPLB is the enhanced software-based load balancing. Unlike baseline nickel, which just sends the data across all the Q pairs evenly, DQPLB provides us the option to send larger portion of the message on the least loaded or congested parts. This improves our ECMP performance by a large margin without the need of any changes on the network but merely some changes on the comms library stack. So let's look at some of the results of our custom transport and how it compares with baseline nickel. TQPLB is designed in a way such that the topology awareness is built into it. As we just discussed, TQPLB has the knowledge of where the ranks are located with respect to each other. So using the topology information, we can configure each connection differently. We provide four scopes, the intra-rack, intra-zone, intra-building, and cross-building. By tuning several transport parameters on a per-network hop basis, we can achieve optimal performance along long and short-haul data paths alike. Here we present point-to-point -point send receive results with DQPLB and out-of-box nickel. We see almost line rate performance with DQPLB for two GPUs which are in different buildings. This is something that baseline nickel cannot achieve due to the architectural limitations such as the two-stage copy and the lack of topology awareness. We also tuned our transport configs, taking the collective nature into account. For instance, let's take all to all as an example. 
It's the most bandwidth intensive collective since every GPU is talking to every other GPU. The baseline zero copy implementation removes the copy overhead, but can potentially cause network congestion or packet loss in the worst case scenario when there's too many concurrent communications. By carefully tuning of the transport parameters, we are able to achieve good throughput without flooding the network. This helps us achieve almost 20 to 50% better benchmark performance and end-to-end 10% end-to-end model performance. In the future, instead of static tuning on a per network hop basis and collective basis, we will work on auto-tuning these parameters. Back to Min on what our future holds. So what's next? We are still in the middle of model and hardware innovation for large language model training. As of the rest of this year, we are already enabling resource-efficient communication, support over a much larger scale-up domain connected by high-speed NVNIC. For model innovation side, for serving this gigantic model to the end users, we need to optimize collectives generated by our inference workload. It moved me over NVNIC or scale-out network. As a difference compared to the previous pre-training forecast, we are optimizing low latency communication and fine-grained computer communication overlap. Sometimes we are custom kernels. For the coming layer, model growth continues with a higher possibility to even challenge the limited hardware capacity and would end up require some training maybe across heterogeneous accelerators or even located in different data center regions. We are actively preparing the communication support for the required heterogeneous and long distance communication. So last, let's summarize the takeaways from our LAMA 4 experiences. We believe the communication and the network innovation is a key investment for supporting large language model training and also inference. As demonstrated in our LAMA 4 experiences, the accumulated communication contributions delivered not only more than 15% end-to-end training efficiency, but also enabled some key features such as elastic training. Our experiences demonstrated the power of the course layer core design approach, which sets a success to allow us provide process support and deliver into production and scale. Ongoing and future large language model require diverse communication support. A unified communication stack sets a foundation for us to efficiently explore and deliver all the requirements in production. More to come in the coming heterogeneous training era, we look forward to it.